Okay, so today we're uh, we're taking a deep dive into something pretty disturbing, actually. It's um, scams, but not just any scams. These are scams that target grieving families. Yeah, it's a really unfortunate aspect of, of humanity. Yeah. I guess you could say that there are people out there who will take advantage of anyone at their most vulnerable time, and, and sadly, funerals are no exception. It's awful. And we're going to talk about some specific scams in a minute, but just at a high level, yeah. how big of a problem is this really? Well, the SCARS Institute, the, the report that we're looking at today, actually, they, they call it a growing epidemic. And and frankly, the more I read, the more I agree with that assessment. I mean, the uh -huh. the audacity of some of these scams, it's just, it's mind boggling. So let's um let's break down some of these scams because I really want to understand how they work and and more importantly, how people can protect themselves. So the, the first one that the SCARS report talks about is what they call the funeral home fee scam. Can you, uh, can you set the stage for us? What's going on here? Sure. So picture this. You've just lost a loved one. You're, you're deep in grief, trying to make funeral arrangements, and, and suddenly you get a call or maybe an email from someone claiming to be from the funeral home itself. Oh, no. Right? And, and they say there's been a problem, maybe an unexpected fee or a paperwork issue, something that requires immediate payment. Oh, that's just cruel. I mean, using the funeral home itself as a cover, knowing families are likely already overwhelmed of all the arrangements. Exactly. It's incredibly manipulative. Mm -hmm. and, and what's worse is that grief itself actually makes us more vulnerable to this kind of deception. Really? Is there like a scientific reason for that? There is. Studies show that intense grief actually affects our brain chemistry particularly areas involved in decision-making and, and critical thinking. It's yeah. like our brains are in survival mode, just trying to process the loss. Yeah. And, and we become more susceptible to suggestion, less able to think clearly. You know, scammers know this and they exploit it ruthlessly. It's awful. So they're using the funeral home's name. They're creating the sense of urgency. What else makes the scam so effective? Well, think about it. In that moment of grief, wouldn't you do almost anything to ensure that your loved one's funeral goes smoothly? Absolutely. You just want to honor their memory without any added stress. Exactly. And that's the pressure point these scammers push on. They often use very urgent language demanding immediate payment to avoid you know, further delays or complications with the funeral arrangements. Right. And they know that people are much more likely to make impulsive decisions when they're under that kind of pressure. So it's playing on those emotions, but it's also the timing. Like you said, they're catching people at their most vulnerable. Exactly. When they're likely surrounded by family, maybe feeling overwhelmed with decisions, it's a recipe for disaster, unfortunately. And it's not just these fake fees, right? The report also talks about another scam that honestly might be even more insidious if you can believe that this one targets families online. Yeah, the online casket scam, they uh, they prey on two things, really. The, the rising cost of funerals and the fact that you know, more and more people are shopping for everything online these days, including funeral arrangements. Makes sense. Funerals are expensive and people are always looking for ways to save money. So so how does this scam actually work? Well, these scammers, they set up fake websites or online ads that look incredibly legitimate. I mean, they might use official sounding names, maybe even steal logos from real funeral homes or casket companies. Wow. So they're really going all out to look legit. Oh, absolutely. They're yeah. counting on people, you know, being so focused on finding a good deal that they don't look too closely. And the bait Caskets offered at unbelievably low prices. The classic too-good-to-be-true scenario. But in this case, it's just especially cruel because people are already dealing with a significant financial burden on top of their grief. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. These scammers know that price is a huge factor for families you know, struggling to afford a funeral. So they offer what seems like a solution, a chance to give their loved one a dignified farewell without breaking the bank. Awful. So what happens? Do they even send a casket? Sometimes they don't and the family's left scrambling at the last minute. Other times they do send something, but it's a far cry from what was promised. Instead of a solid wood casket with, you know, a beautiful finish, it's a cheap knockoff. Maybe made of particle board with a flimsy lining. It's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. So we've got emotional manipulation, financial pressure in both of these scams. Are there any other like common threads that we're seeing here? Absolutely. Remember how we talked about the funeral home fee scammers demanding wire transfers or gift cards? Yeah, because those are almost impossible to trace. Exactly. And unfortunately, it's the same story with the online casket scam. They push for these untraceable payment methods, making it incredibly difficult, if not impossible, for victims to recover their money. So what can people do to protect themselves? What are some red flags to watch out for? Well, first and foremost, if a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. That goes for anything, but especially in this context. 
Don't let the desire for a good deal cloud your judgment. Okay, so too good to be true. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. What else? What other kinds of things do these scammers do that people should be aware of? Well, another big one is pressure tactics. We talked about the urgent language, but, mm -hmm. you know, they might also try to rush you into making a decision saying things like, this is a limited time offer, or we only have one casket left at this price. So if they're trying to force your hand, that's a big warning sign. Exactly. Yeah. Take your time, do your research, and and pay close attention to their communication style, too. Are they being evasive about details? Do they have, like, a real phone number, a real address listed, or does it seem kind of vague and unverifiable? Right. You want to make sure they're legit before you give them any information, let alone any money. Absolutely. And and this might seem obvious, but it's worth repeating. Always use secure payment methods like credit cards. Yeah. They offer way more protection than wire transfers or gift cards, which are essentially like sending cash with no way to get it back. OK, solid advice. But let's say despite all the precautions, someone does fall victim to one of these scams. What should they do? First of all, don't beat yourself up about it. These scammers are very good at what they do, and they're preying on people when they're at their most vulnerable. The important thing is to act quickly. Contact your bank or your credit card company immediately and report the fraud. So try to stop the payment or reverse it if you can. Yeah. What then? File a complaint with the authorities. In the U.S., that would be the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. They investigate these kinds of scams and try to shut them down. And just thinking practically here, isn't there also power in sharing your experience, too? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Leaving online reviews, warning others about these scam websites or companies can help prevent them from targeting other grieving families. It might feel like a small thing, but it can really make a difference. It's just it's heartbreaking that these scams even exist. It's hard enough losing a loved one without having to worry about being exploited during such a difficult time. It really is. But, you know, knowledge is power. By understanding how these scams work, being aware of the red flags, and taking steps to protect yourself, you can greatly reduce your risk of becoming a victim. That's the message we need to get out there. So if you know anyone who's going through a loss, please share this information with them. Help us protect each other from these predators who try to profit from grief. It's our collective responsibility to look out for one another, especially during life's most difficult moments. Well said. That's going to do it for this deep dive. I really appreciate you joining me today and, and sharing your expertise on this really important topic. Thanks for having me.